Recently, a scandal broke out that the Xuanzang Temple in Nanjing, Jiangsu Province. It was discovered that a row of memorial tablets commemorating Japanese invaders was enshrined in the temple, triggering a public outcry. Enshrining tablets is just one of the ways the temple makes money. In addition to being a monk, the abbot, the head of the temple, is also a businessman and a screenwriter. He holds several official titles. After the story came to light, following coverage by the official media, it quickly got to the top of the search list of Chinese social media. According to pictures provided by netizens, several Japanese war criminal tablets are enshrined in the temple, signed by Wu Aping. Each tablet is enshrined for five years from 2018 to 2022. Mr. Wu, a resident near the temple, revealed that there were four to five small halls inside the temple dedicated to hosting tablets of longevity. He has seen many people from out of town at the temple to inquire about enshrining tablets. The owner of a retail store near the temple also said that the Jizo Temple, the structure where the tablets were found, was built around 2010. Believers spend money to buy longevity tablets. The common price is 20,000 to 40,000 RMB a year. According to the Tianyan Cha website, the current abbot of Xuanzang Temple is Master Chuan Zhen, with the Dharma name Cheng Hong and the common name Li Yi Zhang. In addition to his monk status, he is also the legal representative and executive director of a Nanjing based elderly care service company, an international travel agency, and a cultural media company, all of which he holds shares in. He has also made two anti Japanese patriotic films before. In addition to running businesses and making movies, Master Chuan Zhen enjoys socializing with government officials. Many officials in Nanjing have had contact with him. As such, he also holds titles for several official positions. The temple in Nanjing isn't the only temple that has been commercialized. Temples commonly sell entrance tickets, incense, and other related merchandise. They also offer tablets for worship, accept merit donations, and perform religious rituals to generate revenue. Take for example Jing'an Temple, one of Shanghai's four major Buddhist temples. According to a survey by Times News, Jing'an Temple offers tablets of various kinds at a price range of 50 to 5,000 RMB per year. The most expensive donation is 9,000 RMB when one donates a statue or contributes to the building of the temple. There is no limit to the number of donations one can make. In addition, Jing'an Temple sells consecrated objects such as a gilt bronze statue of Sakamuni Buddha which costs 19,800 RMB. Some well-known temples have gone even further in commercialization. Take for example the Fa Men Temple, a 5 a scenic spot in Shanxi province. In addition to the regular income from religious land, other revenue generating methods include using non-religious land for value-added development, operating outdoor advertising, and selling souvenir merchandise. Due to the over-commercialization, the Fa Men Temple scenic area has been in a whirlpool of public criticism since it was first built around 2010. In the past few years, due to the impact of the outbreak on tourism, the Fa Men Temple was subjected to several lawsuits for overdue financing leases and the seizure of a large number of bank accounts and other assets. An even more typical example is the Shaolin Temple. The current abbot of Shaolin Temple, Shi Yangshin, is a publicly recognized political monk and CEO of Shaolin. Under his direction, the Shaolin Temple has engaged in various business activities, ranging from registering companies, performing commercially, establishing overseas branches to open Taobao stores, licensing IPs, auctioning phone numbers, and consecration. The Shaolin Temple operates companies in various fields, including industrials, publishing, tourism, and e-commerce. A former associate professor from Beijing Capital Normal University revealed that after the commercialization of the temple, there have been disputes about how to divide the money. Professor Li said, These temples want to make money, then the religious bureau wants to take a cut, and sometimes even the tourism bureau wants a share. One time, I visited Shandong province. A teacher told me one of his students was the abbot of a temple. At that time, this student had this type of frustration. He said that the Tourism Bureau asked for money and the temple also wanted money. Anyway, it was all about money and it had nothing to do with religion at all. 
According to statistics from the Chinese Buddhist Association, by the end of 2020, there were still 32,600 temples in China, of which more than 20% have been commercialized, mainly in cities like Beijing and Shanghai, and provinces like Zhejiang, Henan, and Sichuan, etc.